Hi, my name is Noma Langham Shawley Moses with SuccessfulBlackWoman.com. I'm with my good friend Shaquita Graham with AtecoWeb.com. How are you doing today, Shaquita? I'm doing good, Noma. How are you? Great. So this is a great topic that comes from actually my Facebook feed. Um, I was looking at uh, my Facebook feed and when I was reading through the comments, um, they got very interested, very interesting to the point that I wanted us to discuss it. So the topic was um, my Facebook friend asked if toxic, femi toxic feminism is something that we're going to just ignore. And the reason why she said that was she talked about um, how some women will claim that they're independent and that they want equality and all this other stuff. And then she said, but then they go out on a date and then they suddenly expect a man to pay. And then she asked, you know, are we going to address toxic, black toxic feminism? Okay. Let's say you. All right. Well, I, there's a lot that's been going on with the whole black feminist idea. I have no idea what the heck that is, but I can see why people are saying this. And I'm just going to share my screen because I think that we, I think we shouldn't ignore it. I think that uh, what she said makes a lot of sense, but I think this is why people are really having a hard time with these so-called black feminists. So um, Tariq Nasheed tweeted this and said that pretend black feminists act as shields to allow suspected white supremacists to spew racism. And he's speaking about Amy Schumer who says that men of color harass women more. And we see that um, even somebody else said that people like Lena Dunham and Amy Schumer refuse to see that, um, you know, Misogyny. misogyny among men of color is is no more prevalent than among white white men and somebody else says that like how do you know who is hollering at somebody else more whatever this whole street harassment thing that's become a legal issue for black men then you have essence that's coming out with a so-called these studies that black people who are mixed look better so they're promoting this whole thing about black women being with white men then you have gabrielle union hold on hold on let's see how i get out of that ah okay well, we, could put, we could put it on here she had an article about nate parker who was not guilty of rape but basically black feminists seem to ignore all of these people who these white men who have been convicted but received no jail time so i think that's why people are saying there's such an issue what about you um well you know i've always been clear about my lack of understanding of what black feminists what black feminism is um, I'm not a feminist and I don't want to be a feminist and I don't want to be associated with feminism. So that's my, my starting point. However, if I were to say the best thing I could about feminism, it would be uh, that women want to not be oppressed by men. That's a basic thing. Nobody wants to be oppressed by anybody. My problem though is that um, that's not what black feminism appears to stand for, especially the toxic kind. What it seems to stand for is just total annihilation of black men. And I, for one, can't stand for that. I think I've been clear in every segment where we've discussed black marriage, black community, black relationships. I'm on the side of building black men up, building black families, um, and raising great black kids. So it would be a contradiction for me to sign on to a movement that I consistently see talking badly about black men. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, um, it brings up to me something that I actually found on um, the Cows radio show, Context of White Supremacy. Big shout out to them because they have um, so many great uh, shows uh, that help people get an understanding of situations like this. And they were interviewing Renithia Tate, who has a book called Pieces of a Puzzle, where she um, 
has a collection of interviews from black women who talk about their ex sexual experiences with white men and 13 white men speaking on the issue of sex and race. And what she discovered is a disturbing pattern of savage behavior among white men that, that has been running rampant for centuries with black women. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you know, a lot of times these so-called feminists are painting and portraying black men along with mainstream media as these horrendous, um, like the worst type of men that wants to just oppress you and mistreat you and be savage towards you, where Miss Tate found in her book, Pieces of a Puzzle, through her studies, that there's actually been this um, behind the scenes scenario where white men have uh, really uh, participated in some of the most disgusting acts with black women behind the scenes. And then you have again, the so-called black feminists who are promoting this idea that we saw with the uh, biracial kids and scandal and things like that, that black women should be with white men because they're somehow better. So I think that when we see these um, narratives and this propaganda, we need to think about the fact that white supremacists endeavor to maintain control over the black population through the woman who's closest to the black child. They know that the woman is the one who is, is the educator and, and who would, if anybody, inspire the next generation to fight against white supremacy. But in, in um, Ms. Tate's proposition is that through these, these, these lewd sexual acts with black women, white supremacists are silencing them to where they will not fight against it. And, and a lot of people say that about, you know, interracial dating on both sides with black men and white women also. That it silences them. You know, to get back to the original point, it seems a little bit, um, it's only the tip of the iceberg, really, when you mm -hmm. talk about um, the the irony behind um, a woman who says that you know you know these brothers they're useless blah 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 I'm independent I don't need them um, and then turns around goes on a date and expects him to pay well how's he gonna pay if he's useless um, or if he can't get it right or so forth or why would he want to oh exactly oh, exactly why would he want to if that's how you feel about him so I think what um, the person who was talking about this was alluding to was the the talking out of both sides of your mouth. In other words, on one hand, you're ex you have the expectation of the protection, the provision, um, and the love and attention of a black man. And then on another hand, you're over here, um, you know, uh, poking da daggers into his back. And, you know, just in case it wasn't clear, I'm saying you have to pick a side. And I think um, I'm, in fact, I don't think I know you all enough to know that you're on the same side that I am, which is that of building up uh, the black community. And you can't do that with, without black men. And I want to agree with what you're saying, um, that if we, the black women, if our minds get brainwashed and we begin to believe that all black men are horrible or they're bad or, and so forth, um, where are we going to look to get a man outside of the black community? And what that does is it stops us from building the black community. It stops us from believing in the black community. And quite honestly, to me, one of the most dangerous aspects of it is I have two sons. What am I going to tell them? If my belief and my mindset is that black men are the worst and all this other stuff, what am I instilling in my sons? What am I believing about them? Because as most people know, Children and actually people in general rise to your expectation. So if my expectation is I'm raising people who are going to turn into little savages or whatever else, then can you imagine how I'm treating them and how I'm damaging them um, under the guise of raising them? Yeah, and you know what? There's so much to say on this. We're going to continue this on our channel. Um, we're going to do an extended video about this. But the things that I just want to recap and say is like you're saying, the whole thing why people hate black feminists, I think, right now is because they seem to talk out both sides of their mouth. I mean, you're sitting here with a biracial child, which what is biracial? That's black. Okay, and then you're talking about black people. And as black women, we, it, what it's doing is it's deflecting us away from our true role as black women in the community. I think that 
if some if some entity like this is threatening our community the takeaway is that we as black women real black women most of the black women who love black men and most of the black men who love black women we need to stand against this narrative we see this propaganda coming at us and we need to put up our defenses we need to shun this and we need to um you know just just stay away from this craziness absolutely um, it's actually the oldest trick in the book divide and conquer yeah. Um, so you have to see it in play and you're either going to go with it or you're going to stand against it. So I, I'm totally on board with what you're saying. And, and I'm kind of like Muhammad Ali. No black man has never thrown my baby to an alligator that I know of. You know, yeah. I haven't seen black men um, having, you know, a child and then, you know, enslaving the child and just all of this kind of crazy thing. So. I mean, you know, I, I'm not going to put a white man, a suspected white supremacist, because again, I'm not racist against white people. But again, you know, God gave me a side and it's the black side. So, I, hey, I'm with that side. Absolutely. Um, so this is an uh, interesting conversation, which we, like Shaquita said, will continue at MarriedWomen'sBusiness.com. Um, and um, we, what we're doing from here on is extended, extending the conversations because our conversations seem to always kind of uh, get shortened because we want to do segments that are engaging and are not too long. Um, so it's marriedwomensbusiness.com. I want to thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Shaquita. You're always wonderful. Um, and my name is Noma Langham Sally Moses with SuccessfulBlackWoman.com. And of course, Shaquita, you can find at atecoweb.com. Thank you, guys. Thank you.